returning. So when I started painting, I was just sort of practicing. And a lot of artists they say, oh, I'm going to be an artist, and then they can't really do anything. And then the blues came around, and then they say, Well, I'm an abstract artist. And then they sort of maybe find themselves and give up. Some people carry on with abstraction. I found myself uh, enjoying looking at people at work, and you can even see, so to speak. So I could say there's elements that come from having inspired by artwork. Art will always be timeless. And until now, the way we buy and sell art has remained timeless too. Blockchain Art Exchange is set to radically change the status quo. Hello, so my name is Isaac McKenzie. I'm from London. Uh, I'm a self-taught artist. I was a chef. I worked under Michelin chefs uh, and I saw food as an art form and then I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore and came out of the catering industry and I now work in a museum. Uh, called Sir John Sands Museum in Central London, where I meet people, the general public, and get to talk about art all day in, day out. And then around that, I found my passion for creating. So uh, I would find myself etching, painting, and working with pastel work, and just trying to master this skill. So when I work at the, the top end of the industry, um, obviously, it's the plate is like a the plate is like a painting. So many many elements being brought together to finish the masterpiece and always working under sort of a master trades or craftsman so to speak so I always liked that element and I always saw the food um, the plate as sort of the canvas I've always been able to get myself in sort of like a stance and to be able to create but I always used to get quite angry and rip things up when I didn't have that sort of perfect finished article so I stopped doing it and then later on in my life uh, I decided that I wanted to start creating again and that what I was going to do was going to start a journey to create things and if it was good I was going to keep it, if it was rubbish I was going to keep it. I have gone through two long periods of destroying a lot of work but um, that's what I've been doing and my goal is to master the skills because I'm looking at masterpieces of art every day so I'm analysing paintings and I'm going to exhibitions all the time in London looking at work and trying to um, work out how these artists have painted things, how they've created them, so I've been able to create myself. It's a therapeutic, and then you have guilt later <laughs> on when you think about what you threw away, because obviously everything is like process, isn't it, and sort of progression. So, but sometimes you need to get rid of everything to start again. I was drawn to obviously the um, Renaissance and sort of Italian sort of masterpieces when I was younger. Uh, then I was, in, I was given a lecture by one of my teachers when I was about nine, ten years old about Salvador Dali, so that was probably my first route to idolising an artist. Yeah. So one of my teachers at school gave us a, a lecture, I probably would have been at like nine or ten, and that really inspired me and opened my eyes up to the artist, so to speak, and artists, and the sort of whole process of an artist in their life. Um, and then through since then I've been interested in many different forms of art, like graffiti art, uh, sort of the history of graffiti, and then when I, since I've lived in London, which has been for about 10, 12 years now, uh, I've found a lot of new artists, so I like Rauschenberg, I like um, William Hogarth, um, Canaletto, um, Frank Auerbach, um, and then obviously the Boivier's, and just many, many different artists. I wouldn't say I have a select artist, I say, I'm entirely inspired by them, but I'm inspired by many artists. Well, um, one returning point, so when I started painting, I was just sort of practicing, and a lot of artists say, say I'm going to be an artist, and then they can't really do anything, and then the blues came around, and then they say, oh, I'm an abstract artist, and then they sort of maybe find themselves or give up. Some people carry on with abstraction. I found myself uh, enjoying looking at people at work, the movement of the city, so to speak, so I could say there's elements of London that have inspired my artwork. So at the minute, I've been working on two sort of sets, two directions, so I'm working uh, on etching, which I found about a year and a half ago, and I've been able to etch and exhibit off the back of that, and I've found a niche, and I really enjoy etching. Um, so I'm, obviously I'm going to continue with my etching, and I want to do a lot of work which revolves around people at work, uh, mainly uh, people that are sort of have trades, like artists, so for example I've done the etchings of people on 
market stalls getting movement in the street, uh, uh, my barber and artists at work, so that's one element. And then the other thing is um, painting, painting things in a similar manner, but that is the, that's what we're looking at, but I'm trying to improve the actual technique of my painting. So the way I see it is I see art as a hobby, and it's something that I enjoy doing, and it's something that I want to enjoy doing for the rest of my life. It's something that I want to master in my lifetime, and really not be drawn into, uh, you're going to be an artist and because you paint something you can work millions of pounds and just be more interested in the fact that you, you're an artist because you love creating and you love expressing yourself. Paul is my piece to interact with people that like your work and to meet people who like your work, meet other artists that are doing similar things to you whether it's etching or painting, not be um, disheartened if someone's better than you or if someone's further down the line with their technique. And um, obviously portray, portray yourself and your art as you. And also for me, it's meeting people in the art world who appreciate art. Um, for me, what I want to do is I want, I want to create affordable art. I want people to invest in me. I want people to realize that my art is an investment. So if you're investing in me now, when I'm in my thirties, it's an early journey, but in 20 years time, I want to be 10 times better, 30 times better than what I've created then. So what you're investing in me will increase in value. And also the money I then make will mean that I can carry on buying materials to carry on creating. And it's not about, it's about leaving a body of work and it's about people appreciating your work. Um, obviously I paint and etch. Painting is my big thing, but etching has become a big thing now. The reason I came into it is because I, I contemplated going to university, but it's very expensive as we all know. So on the advice from a friend, I decided that I'd go to an adult education, which is Camden Wakeman's College, which was set up by Ruskin, which in the Victorian times, which enabled everybody to have access to the arts. So from going there, I started off going to a painting class, which was 10 weeks, which just meant that I could go somewhere, get on with the job, and then leave with, a, with some teaching at an affordable price. And with the etching, I had looked and been purchasing etching plates because I was interested by it. And I was dealing in etchings and etching plates. And then I decided that I wanted to learn how to do the process. So I went on a 10 week etching course. And then from there, I just, it just got me. It, because I was a chef, I was able to work with the, the process. The etching has a very slow process. And if you mess it up, it's finished. So for me, it was about the process and that process then enabled me to improve in my painting and although I was an artist. Uh, with working in a museum, I've seen a lot of people coming out of university with a big debt and thinking that, oh, I'm going to get this job and realising that they're not going to get that job because um, they haven't got the, the skills, so to speak. So I was teaching, I decided that I was going to teach myself to paint in my kitchen and I was inspired by sort of kitchen sink artists who were people who had studios in their house and they just worked and worked and worked. So that was my inspiration. And also I was inspired by the museum I worked in where Sir John Sohn had a museum in his house. So I sort of was playing on the whole, I'm going to paint in my house and then have a, I'm going to exhibit my work in my house and then we'll see where it gets to. And I've come on a journey where I've met you guys, I've met many artists and I've exhibited in London. So it's just the start of a journey. So. Why I was interested with the blockchain art is because I felt that the uh, blockchain is showing, uh, in, I'm very interested as I work in the museum in research and understanding you know, who's owned something and that path and the journey of a piece of artwork. So I found that that was one of the key things that the blockchain was introducing and it, I felt it was very in the early stages but very revolutionary and I was inspired by this and, it, and I felt like it was a safe place where I could put artwork as you could say, into the universe for people to appreciate where they could invest in me, but then also what they were investing in would gain um, profit over time as I improved. If you like that video and you want to get more information about artist profiles, crypto, digital art, NFTs, and much more, be sure to click the subscribe button coming up beside me and check out many more of our videos for much more. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.